Welcome, Welcome Cornerstone, Cornerstone families. families! We are so pumped to have you joining us online today. In today's video, we're going to have a time of worship as well as a Bible story for you guys to watch. And afterwards, you can check out our Cornerstone Kids Facebook page to find the parent guides for today's lesson. Make sure you gather as a family and go through those activities and questions together. Yeah, now let's hop into worship. Why would I worry? You never show a play and you don't make mistakes. I'm not in a hurry. No, I'm walking at your pace because you showed a better way. Welcome to the Story Lab. This week we're talking about integrity while we take a look at the story of someone who said no to something very tasty. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about integrity, which is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. What are you doing? Oh, I'm studying to get my driver's license. You might want to study the actual manual instead of a racing car. I already know all that stuff. Really? Yeah. I probably know more about driving than you do. That sounds like a challenge. Let's do it. It's time to play... Driver's license dry run. Dry run? Like a practice test for the real thing. Round one. How much faster than the posted speed limit can you drive on the highway? Oh, I know this. Uh, you can go as fast as you want as long as someone else is driving faster. That is incorrect. It is never legal to go faster than the posted speed limit. That is the correct answer. Yes. Uh, okay, ask another one. I've got this. Round two. When is it okay to drive past a stop sign without stopping? If you're late for school and you don't see anyone coming. That is incorrect. It is never okay to drive through a stop sign without stopping. That is the correct answer. Come on, these are trick questions, obviously. Actually, uh, these are pretty basic. Double points for the next one. All or nothing. Okay. Welcome to the bonus round for double the points. When do you need to wear a seatbelt? 
when your parents tell you to. That is incorrect. Every time you're in the car. That is correct, and we have a winner. Yes. Well, you should put on your seatbelt when your parents tell you to. Yeah, but they shouldn't have to tell you to do it. <sighs> Fine, you win. I'll study. Good. Hey, that's my snack. Speaking of snacks, it's time for the story before the story. Today, we're in the Old Testament, the book of Daniel. God had a plan to bless the whole world through one family, the Israelites. But God's people kept turning away from God. It seemed every good king who led the people to follow God's laws was followed by a foolish king who led the people to do terrible, wrong things. At last, God's people were attacked by Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. Over and over, the kings who led God's people turned away from God. Finally, they were conquered by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. I hereby declare you are under the rule of King Nebuchadnezzar. The Babylonians took treasure from God's temple. Our God will love these. They also captured many of God's people and marched them across 500 miles of wild desert to Babylon. There, King Nebuchadnezzar gave orders to his chief official, Ashpenaz. Oh, Ashpenaz, bring me some of the Israelites to train and serve in my palace. They must be strong, intelligent, handsome, and able to adapt to life in Babylon. Four of these young men were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Teach them our language and our literature. I must have the best and the brightest. The chosen young men were to go through three years of training and eat food from the king's own table. King Nebuchadnezzar was determined to shape everything they would think, say, and do so they could serve in his palace. The first thing the chief official did was to change their names. Name? Mishael. I'm going to call you Meshach. Mm, Meshach is really close to Mishael, so... <laughs> Next. Name? Hananiah. Shadrach. Oh, that's not even close. Next. Azaria. Abednego. Next. Daniel. Belteshazzar. Bel... Can you spell that for me? Next. The four young men faced their next challenge at mealtime. They were given the same luxurious food and drink that the king himself ate. But God made it clear to Daniel and his friends that it was wrong to eat the king's food. Perhaps because it had been dedicated to the king's false gods. We appreciate the honor, but we'd like to choose our own food and drink. I'm under orders from the king. If you don't eat what you're supposed to and show up looking worse than the others, I'll pay the price for it. Just test us for 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetables and water, and then see how we measure up. Mm, you have 10 days. So for a week and a half, Daniel and his friends ate nothing but veggies and drank nothing but water. And get this, at the end of those 10 days, Daniel and the others actually looked healthier than the other men who had eaten the royal food. Huh, I wouldn't have believed it, but I'm impressed. They should call what you ate the Belteshazzar diet. <laughs> In addition to physical health, God gave Daniel and his friends knowledge and understanding. Daniel could even understand dreams and visions. And at the end of three years, these young men were at the top of their class. King Nebuchadnezzar, I present to you the graduating class of 584 BCE. BCE? No idea. About that. Nebuchadnezzar examined the young men and found that Daniel and his friends showed more wisdom and understanding than any of the others. What lives if it is fed, but dies if you give it a drink? That would be uh, fire. <laughs> Amazing. When King Nebuchadnezzar asked Daniel and his friends for advice, he found it to be 10 times better than that of his other advisors. He gave the young men important roles and they served him for many years. The end. Wow, Daniel and his friends were ripped away from everything they knew and then asked to do something they knew wasn't right. Yeah, that must have been some serious pressure, you know? But they still chose to honor God. So what's our part in the story? Well, Daniel and his friends made a choice to do the right thing, even when they were in a brand new place where it would have been a lot easier to just go with the flow. 
it can be super hard not to just do what everyone else is doing. Even when we know it's not right. Yeah, you'll often have a chance to make a choice between what's easy and what's right. You might be hanging out with friends who want to watch a movie you know your parents would say no to. It would be super easy to just go along with it and watch it anyway. But you can choose to make a stand and not watch, even if your friends do. Or you might be taking a test that's super important to your grade. And if you just glance over, you could check your answers on a neighbor's paper. You can choose to keep your eyes on your own work, even if it's hard. Yeah, doing the right thing can be tough sometimes, but when you follow Jesus, God sends the Holy Spirit to be with you. Anytime you're struggling to do the right thing, you can ask God for help. Then you can make a wise choice, no matter where you are. Just like Daniel and his friends, you can stand up to stand out. Stand up to stand out. I like that. Yeah, pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. You got it. See you next time. So, here's the thing. Do what's right wherever you are. <sighs> Want me to help you study? That'd be great. Ooh. So, maybe cookies aren't exactly wrong, but after two, there might be a wiser choice. <sighs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. You're gonna have one? Go on. No, no, go on, take a bite. I don't want one though. Go ahead. Oh. I took one, it's healthy, right? <laughs>